That soda can you just crushed? It could be back in your hands as a brand new can in just two months. That old newspaper? It might be shredded, soaked, and turned into fresh paper five more times before it's truly done. Recycling isn't just about tossing stuff into the right bin. It gives everyday materials a whole new life. Steel from old cars get melted into skyscrapers, plastic bottles become sports jerseys, and glass bottles? They never really die. Today, we're getting into the world's top 5 most recycled products. What happens to them? Let's find out. First up at number 5 is steel. Steel is one of the few materials on Earth that never truly dies. No matter how many times you recycle it, it never loses its strength. That's why steel recycling is one of the most efficient processes in the world, ensuring that everything from old cars to demolished skyscrapers gets a second life. It starts in massive scrapyards where truckloads of decommissioned vehicles, appliances, and industrial equipment pile up, waiting to be reborn. Here, giant industrial shredders, some as tall as buildings, rip apart these metal giants, breaking them down into smaller, more manageable chunks. Conveyor belts carry the shredded pieces through an intense magnetic separation system, pulling out pure steel while filtering out other metals like aluminum and copper. The recovered steel is then compressed into huge bales, making transportation easier before the real transformation begins. Next stop, the steel mill. Here, the compressed bales are fed into enormous electric arc furnaces where temperatures soar past 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, turning solid scrap into a molten, fiery liquid. But before this steel can be used again, it needs to be purified. Any unwanted elements, rust, coatings, or contaminants are burned off with oxygen or bonded with special chemicals that skim impurities away as slag. Once purified, the molten steel is poured into casting molds, slowly cooling into slabs, billets, or rods, each destined for a specific purpose. Some will be rolled into thin sheets for car bodies, while others will become the beams that support towering skyscrapers. The entire process is so efficient that a steel beam from a demolished bridge could be melted, reshaped, and used in a brand new structure within weeks. But steel recycling isn't just about saving resources, it's a major win for the environment too. Producing new steel from recycled material reduces CO2 emissions by up to 58% and saves thousands of pounds of raw materials like iron ore and coal. Next at number 4, Aluminum Cans. Aluminum is the ultimate comeback material. It can go from trash to brand new in just 60 days. That soda can you just tossed today? It could be back on the shelf before you even notice. But how does it happen so fast? Let's break it down. It all starts with massive bales of crushed cans, each packed with around 65,000 aluminum cans. These bales are trucked to recycling plants where high-speed shredders rip them into tiny pieces. This makes it easier to remove leftover plastic, labels, or coatings. Next, optical scanners sort out anything that isn't aluminum, while powerful magnets pull away stray steel bits and air jets blast off contaminants. Now, it's clean, but still in shredded form. To bring it back to life, the shredded aluminum is melted in furnaces at 1,220 degrees Fahrenheit. Any leftover paint or lacquer burns away, leaving behind pure molten metal. But aluminum has a tricky problem. It reacts with oxygen, forming a rough, unwanted layer called dross. Operators have to skim this off to keep the metal pure. Once fully purified, the liquid aluminum is poured into molds, forming massive 27-ton ingots, each containing about 1.5 million recycled cans. These ingots are sent to rolling mills, where they're flattened into ultra-thin sheets, which is just a fraction of a millimeter thick. From there, they're shipped to manufacturers and transformed into brand new soda cans, food packaging, airplane parts, and even spacecraft components. Aluminum's real superpower? It can be recycled forever without losing quality. And since recycling saves 95% of the energy needed to make new aluminum from raw materials, every can you recycle keeps the cycle going and helps conserve resources. Now at number 3, Paper and Cardboard. Every day, mountains of newspapers, magazines, office paper, and cardboard boxes pile into recycling centers, ready for a second life. But before they can be reused, they go through an intense transformation process. It all starts as sorting stations, where workers in high-speed machines separate paper into different categories. Cardboard, newspapers, glossy magazines, and office paper. 
high-quality office papers kept aside to be turned into fresh printer sheets, while lower-grade materials like newspapers and cardboard are destined for packaging. Once sorted, the paper is compacted into massive bales for easy transport to recycling mills. There, the bales are fed into giant mixing tanks called hydropulpers, filled with warm water and powerful agitators that break the paper down into a slurry of cellulose fibers. Eco-friendly chemicals help remove ink, glue, and other residues, ensuring the pulp is clean and ready for reuse. Next, the pulp goes through a filtering system that removes unwanted materials, staples, plastic windows, and tape gets skimmed off or sink to the bottom. Once cleaned, the pulp is sprayed onto a moving mesh conveyor where water drains away, leaving behind a damp sheet of recycled paper. Heated rollers press and dry the sheet, strengthening it before it's wound into massive rolls, each weighing several tons. What happens next depends on the paper's quality. Some become fresh office paper, while other turns into packaging, toilet paper, or even furniture. And since paper can be recycled up to seven times before its fibers break down, it remains one of the most sustainable materials on the planet. Number two is glass bottles and jars. Glass is one of the easiest materials to recycle because it never wears out. Unlike paper or plastic, it can be melted and reshaped forever without losing quality. That means that the glass bottle you tossed into the bin last year could already be back on a store shelf or even part of a building. The process starts with collection. In some places, glass is already sorted by color, clear, green, or brown. But when it's mixed, it has to be separated first. Trucks haul the glass to massive sorting centers where conveyor belts move it under high-speed scanners. These machines analyze each piece instantly and powerful air jets blow the glass into the correct bins. Sorting is key because mixing color weakens the final product. Next, it's time for cleaning. Unlike metal, glass can't be separated with magnets, so other methods are used. Metal caps and lids are pulled out with electromagnetic separators while air blowers remove plastic labels and paper. The glass is then scrubbed in industrial washers to get rid of glue, dirt, and anything else that doesn't belong. Once it's clean, the glass moves on to crushing. Heavy-duty machines break it into small pieces called cullet. Smaller cullet melts faster, so any oversized fragments are sifted out. Then it's off to the furnace, where temperatures reach 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, turning the glass into a molten liquid. At this stage, manufacturers can add minerals to adjust the strength or clarity of the final product. The molten glass is then poured into molds, cooling it into new bottles, jars, or even glass panels for buildings. But not all recycled glass comes back as containers. Some is mixed into concrete to make buildings stronger, and some is finally ground to replace sand and asphalt. Recycling glass also saves energy. Since cullet melts at a lower temperature than raw materials, it cuts energy use by up to 30% and for every 10% increase in recycled glass, CO2 emissions drop by 5%. Since glass takes over a million years to break down in landfills, keeping it in the recycling loop is the only way to stop it from piling up. And finally, at number one, we have PET plastic bottles. Plastic waste is everywhere, but PET bottles are one of the few plastics that can actually be recycled again and again. The problem? Only about 7% ever turn back into new bottles. The rest? They become low-quality plastic products or end up polluting the planet. So, what happens to the bottles you toss in the bin? First, they're collected and compressed into giant bales, each holding tens of thousands of bottles. At the recycling plant, a bale breaker loosens them up before they move on to fast-moving conveyor belts, where high-speed scanners and air jets remove any non-PET plastics, caps, or trash. Next comes deep cleaning. The bottles are dunked in 90 degree caustic water, scrubbing away labels, glue, and dirt. Flotation tanks then separate different plastics. PET sinks while everything else floats and is skimmed off. Once clean, the bottles are shredded into tiny flakes, which must be dried completely before they can be melted. In massive heating chambers, the flakes melt into a thick, honey-like liquid. This molten plastic is stretched into fine polyester fibers, which are spooled, woven, and turned into fabric. Believe it or not, many sports jerseys, sneakers, and backpacks are made entirely from recycled PET bottles. Some PET is even purified and molded back into food-grade plastic pellets, closing the loop by becoming new beverage bottles. 
The future of PET recycling is even more exciting. Scientists are developing chemical processes that could break PET down to its original building blocks, meaning it could be infinitely recycled without losing quality. If this takes off, we may never need to produce new plastic again. But there's a catch. Recycling only works if people actually do it. Contamination, poor sorting, and lack of infrastructure means billions of bottles still end up as waste. With better technology and smarter recycling habits, PET could become one of the most sustainable materials out there. But it all starts with tossing that bottle in the right bin. And that's how millions of tons of materials get recycled every year, turning old products into something new while conserving resources and reducing waste. Which part of the process surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this behind the scenes look, be sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more fascinating factory processes.